Hi you guys, welcome to today's live training. Um, if you are new to this group, then welcome. We do these live trainings every week on Wednesdays on different topics, whether it is emotional eating or cravings or binging or healing your relationship with food, all that fun stuff. So if you are new, then you have a library of past trainings that you can go ahead and watch. So if you go to the top section of this group, you'll find it in the featured section. Um, if you're also new to this group, then welcome. My name is Sabrina. I am a holistic health coach and I help women who have been dieting their entire life, who feel like they just don't know how to eat anymore, who struggle with binging and uncontrollable cravings and you just feel like there's something wrong with you. You feel like you'll never be able to eat normally again without restricting and binging and you're done. You're done dieting. You're done feeling badly about yourself. You are done restricting the foods that you love and you want to learn how to live a healthy lifestyle without constantly giving up the things you love, constantly feeling like your life is a full-time project trying to lose weight. So if that sounds like you, then you are definitely in the right spot. Um, and I help women do that through both one-on-one -on -one coaching and my Food Freedom Academy, which is going on right now, which is, I love them. I love every single one of my clients are just phenomenal, kind-hearted, um, uplifting women. And so unfortunately, the doors for my Food Freedom Academy are currently closed. Um, I will be opening a new group in a couple of weeks. So if you want to know a little bit more about how you could join the Food Freedom Academy so that you can put a stop to food obsession and you can start living your life and feeling free and experiencing everything that life has to offer without constantly having food and weight on your mind, then I will leave a link so you can join the wait list and you can get the details um, as quickly as possible when the doors are open. You can have first priority to know everything that, um, that needs to be known for the Food Freedom Academy. So welcome. Hello, let me know in the comments if you are joining live, say hello. I just want to know that you are here and that you can hear me. Um, whether you're joining live or on the replay, just let me know in the comments. And today we are going to talk about probably my favorite topic, which is willpower. Um, dieting, willpower, self-control, the reason why we are talking about willpower is because it is the number one thing I hear from women saying that they don't have enough willpower and that is the reason why they are struggling with binging and sugar cravings and they feel guilty from overeating. And today I'm going to talk about actually why you don't need willpower to stick to a diet. You actually don't need willpower to improve your eating habits and willpower is not even part of the equation when it comes to changing your lifestyle and improving your eating habits and improving your relationship with food and improving your health. And once you understand this, once I take you through exactly why willpower is insignificant and why focusing our energy on willpower is a huge waste of energy and of time and what to do instead, then you can finally start shifting all of your energy and all of your time that you've been putting towards beating yourself up for not having willpower and actually start putting that energy and that time towards the solution that is going to help you finally put a stop to the binging and the late night overeating and the sugar cravings and then the guilt that comes along with feeling like, oh my God, what did I just do, right? When one cookie leads to two cookies, leads to the entire box and you feel like you have no idea what just happened 
And so you tell yourself, I'm just going to start again tomorrow. I'm going to be better tomorrow. I'm going to have more discipline. I'm going to have more willpower. And then the cycle just restarts over and over again. So if you can relate to that, if you have ever blamed yourself for lacking willpower, just put a hand, put a yes, put a yes in the comments, whether you're watching live, whether you're watching on the replay, put a yes in the comments. And my guess is that 95 to 99% of the women in this group have probably had that mindset. And I used to have that mindset too when I was trying to stick to 1200 calories a day and I couldn't. And then I would binge at night and then I would beat myself up. So again, let me know in the comments, say hello if you're here. And so let's get into it, right? So if you're here and you wanna learn how to put a stop to binging, how to feel at peace with food, how to feel more in control around food, how to improve your eating habits so that you can improve your health, you can have your energy and your confidence back and you can stop feeling like you think about food 24 seven. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is they'll blame their lack of willpower, their lack of self-control, right? And then what they'll do next is instead of finding like putting their energy and their time towards the actual solution, they'll, they'll do a few things, right? So number one is I need to add more rules. I need to cut out the carbs. I need to cut out the sugar. Um, I need to cut out the sweets because if I just have one bite, I can't stop. And I have no willpower once I start. So I just need to cut those foods out so that I don't have those cravings. Or I just need to eat less, right? It's My problem is that I eat too much because of my lack of willpower. So I just need to eat less. I need to control it more. So maybe if I count my calories and I'll become more aware of the foods that I eat. So I'll just start counting my calories on my fitness pal or I'll do Weight Watchers where I'll count my points. So if I count my points, then I will be more aware of the food that I eat and hopefully then I'll have more willpower around those foods, right? Can any of you relate to that? Whenever you blame yourself for not having willpower, not having enough self-control, then we just think that we need to double down on the control. I definitely, if you do that, I used to do that too. I used to log every single food into my fitness pal and I thought that that would be the solution. So that's a huge, huge misinformation being spread out there that you don't have enough willpower so you just need, you need a meal plan or you need more rules, you need more people to tell you what to eat, what not to eat, you need more calorie counting, you need more discipline. And the, the problem with that, right, when you make those mistakes, when you try to focus so much time and energy on those solutions, is that then you end up blaming yourself because you think there's something wrong with you. You see all of these people doing Weight Watchers or keto or intermittent fasting and you see the before and after pictures and you're like, well, it worked for them. Why isn't it working for me? What's wrong with me? Why can't I have more willpower? And then you develop a belief that you have no willpower. You develop a believe that you have no self-control and I talk about this a lot in my Food Freedom Academy because we talk about our beliefs and our identities and how that's actually a self-fulfilling prophecy because imagine you have a deep subconscious belief that you have no self-control, you have no willpower and then the second that you find yourself in front of that food that you see as your weakness, 
and you have one cookie, then your subconscious is going to come up and it's going to say, you know what, Sabrina, you have no willpower, you have no self-control. And so that is going to become a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're going to lose control around that food. And then that's going to reinforce this belief that you have no self-control, you have no willpower. And that's the more that you reinforce that belief on a subconscious level, then the more that that's going to happen, the more you're going to lose control, the more that you are going to binge and overeat and then feel that guilt afterwards, beat yourself up, feel like a failure. All right. And this really, really pains me when I see people blaming themselves for a lack of willpower because they will spend 5, 10, 15, 20 years thinking that they're the problem. So if you are there right now and you have tried Weight Watchers and Keto Intermittent Fasting, Octavia, whatever it is, and you feel like you are the problem and you think that the fix is going to be another diet, another uh, meal plan, then you're completely missing the forest for the trees because there's a reason why those things that you have done repeatedly have not worked. There's a reason why 95% of people who do those things don't succeed. And it's not because 95% of people lack willpower. I want you to stop and think, right now because I can tell you as someone who has been doing this for quite a while and who speaks to a lot of women who might be in the same position as you everyone thinks it's a problem of willpower but if that were the case then we would live in a very very low will society because then 95 to 98 percent of people would have no willpower The way that you do one thing in life is the way that you do everything. And so if you're able to have willpower of steel when it comes to other areas of your life, if you feel like you have achieved so much in other areas of your life and food is the one area that you still can't seem to figure out, then there's probably a reason that goes beyond an internal character flaw, right? There's probably a reason that can be attributed to the solution that you keep trying, which is counting calories or doing the diets or doing the more meal plans or doing the more rules and all of that stuff. So... If you can relate to that, if you've ever blamed yourself for lacking willpower, put yes in the comments below. I want to hear from you. I want to know how many of you can relate to that. And now I want to deconstruct. If it's not about willpower, then what's really going on there? Right? If my problem is not a problem of willpower, then what do I need to do instead, right? That's, that's, the really big, that's the biggest question here. And so let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about binging and overeating and giving into cravings and falling off the wagon and feeling out of control around food because this is exactly, I mean, exactly what I help my clients with what they all come to me with is I just want to eat normally I just want to stop thinking about food all of the time so that's exactly that's exactly why I'm here so why do we why do we binge why do we overeat why do we lose control around food if it has nothing to do with willpower well I'm going to go through four or five reasons. Um, I can't remember how many. Okay, so uh, let me know if you guys if you guys want me to continue, if you want to know more about why this happens and 
If you want to know why it's not about willpower, let me know in the comments. Say yes. Um, all right. So number one is because think of it this way. We want what we can't have, right? We want what is forbidden. If you have a daughter, a son, and you've ever told them that they can't have a certain toy, what's the first toy that they want? The one that they can't have. I want you to think about the last time, the last diet that you went on. Um, let's take, for example, let's take keto, for example. Keto, anyone who doesn't know, is pretty much little to no carbs allowed, even fruits. Um, so when you were on keto and you were told that you could not have carbs, what did you crave the most? Probably not cheese, probably not bacon. It was probably carbs, right? When you, um, I've worked with a lot of clients who've done Octavia. Um, anyone who doesn't know, Octavia is like this pre-made meal delivery thing um, that's basically just bars and tiny, tiny meals. And they don't allow you to eat um, fruit. And anyone who I've worked with who have done that have said the same thing, which is when I was doing Octavia, only thing I wanted to do was eat fruit, right? When someone, when you start a diet and that diet makes a certain food or a certain food group forbidden, then that will make you suddenly want that very food that you can have, even if it's not a food that you particularly love, right? So let's say you can't have, let, we'll take carbs for example, and um, you end up going to a restaurant and they bring you a bread basket in the middle and in your mind you're saying, I can't have bread, I can't have bread, I can't have bread. And you're bringing more attention to the fact that you can't have bread, you can't have bread, you can't have bread. You haven't had bread in two weeks. And then finally your brain like cracks and you've got, you know what? Just tonight. Tonight I'm just going to have one, one bread. One piece of bread. I've been so good. I'm going to have one piece of bread. And then you have that one piece of bread. And then what your brain does, it goes, oh, God, that was so good. And not only was it so good because your body needs carbs, um, but your brain goes, God damn it, Sabrina. You just, you just broke your rule. You ate the bread. And it was so good. And you've been thinking about it for so long and you've been so good. You've already broken your rule. So eat as much bread as you can tonight because you've already been bad. And then you end up overeating the bread and you feel like crap. And it's not because of a lack of willpower. Again, it's because you've been forbidding it for so long. Anyone, even someone with the willpower steel would do that. And then you tell yourself as of tomorrow, I'm not going to eat bread again, right? Does that sound familiar? Leave bread in the comments if you can kind of relate to that story a little bit. And there's a well-known study that was done um, called the Ansel Keys study that demonstrated this. So in this study, there were men who were put on a calorie-restricted diet and what they found, so these men, before they started this study, had a bunch of interests, right? They talked about sports, they talked about the news, they talked about, um, they talked about artists, like they had all these interests. And then when they were put on this calorie restricted diet, they started becoming obsessed with food. And in the months of those calorie restrictions, all they thought about, all they discussed, all they ever did was constantly think and talk about food. And they reported these in uncontrollable cravings. They started to take interest in cookbooks and recipes 
and they even some of them decided to pursue a career in the food industry right at meal times all they cared about was eating their meals and a lot of them would just gulp all their food and like eat so so much instead of actually savoring each bite their life and their thoughts became obsessed with food why because that's the very thing that they were required to have less of. That is the very thing that was limited for them. Again, these men had no problem with willpower. It wasn't an internal character flaw that they had. It was simply the restriction, the product of being told that you cannot have something. So if you are someone right now who is restricting food, who is counting calories, who is trying to cut out certain food groups, who um, is trying to give yourself some of those forbidden foods and you're trying to have all these food rules and you can relate to binging and feeling out of control around certain foods, then the solution isn't more willpower. The solution is to remove those off limit rules that you have for yourself. And of course, I know that this is easier said than done. Of course, I this is exactly why I take you through step by step through systematic habituation in my Food Freedom Academy. But again, that is going to be the high level first step. So let me know if you are still following anyone who's coming in now. Um, welcome. My name is Sabrina. I'm a holistic health coach. And we are talking about willpower, dieting, and binging tonight. Um, so number two, the reason why willpower is not the problem and the reason why we end up binging is that our bodies are biologically designed to fight deprivation. So what I mean by that is that we are creatures that are meant to survive, to try to survive. And food is what provides us with the fuel that we need, quite literally, to live. So the body feels, whenever it feels that its survival is threatened in any way, it will do everything in its power to protect it. We have a biological drive to seek food because we want to survive. And if we deprive our brains and our bodies of those things that we need, enough food that we need, we will be overwhelmed with this intense drive, which is called primal hunger, to eat. You know when like there's different kinds of hunger. There's like that comfortable like, oh, that looks good. Like I'm going to eat it and I'm going to enjoy it. And there's a, there's another kind of hunger, which is like, oh my God, I will eat anything that is put in front of me and I will eat every 10 or 20 minutes and I cannot stop. Th that right there, the longer that you deprive yourself, the greater the chance of your binge and your overeating happening next time you're presented with food. And it's not a lack of willpower, but a result of your body's response to deprivation and its need to survive. So again, the solution, if right now you are depriving yourself, if you are trying to add more control, if you are trying to count your calories or whatever diet you're on and you're trying to deprive yourself, I just want you to know, and I have so much compassion because again, I've been there, but I just want you to know that deprivation only makes that out of control eating worse. It doesn't make it better. And deprivation is actually the cause of overeating, not the solution. And we're going to go into the third reason and then I'm going to wrap things up. Um, the third reason why willpower is not the solution to 
disordered eating behaviors to destructive eating behaviors like overeating, like binging, like cravings, is that willpower, and this is very well known, willpower is a finite resource. It is not like the there's like this common mainstream misinformation that gets thrown around that willpower is like a muscle that you strengthen. That's not true. Think of it this way. Have you ever felt like your willpower was stronger at the end of the day because you've really been strengthening throughout the day? Or do you feel like your willpower at the end of the day is at, at its weakest? Willpower is like a battery, right? So you, you charge your, your battery overnight and you wake up and like your battery is at its highest and you start the day off and you're like, willpower steal, like today is going to be a good day, right? Today I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to eat my chicken. I'm going to eat my salad. I'm going to eat my healthy breakfast. I'm going to go for a run. And I'm going to do all these things like today is a new day. And then as the day go on, the cravings start coming, right? And then you start wanting certain foods and your willpower and your discipline starts dwindling the same way that your phone battery starts dwindling. When eventually you get to the end of the day and the willpower isn't there anymore. And then all those cravings and all those things, all those foods that you've been depriving come up to the surface. And if right now you're thinking that willpower and willpower is is known to be temporarily like by definition, willpower is the ability to resist something in a short period of time. And so if you are currently trying to change your lifestyle for the long term, which I'm hoping that that's the case. I'm hoping that you are not intentionally doing a crash diet, that you are not intentionally knowing that, okay, just need to lose weight for the wedding and then I'm gonna gain all the weight back or I just need to lose weight for three weeks from now and then I'm gonna gain all that weight back. Like I'm assuming that most of you do have long-term goals um, because that's what I help with. I'm assuming that's what the goal is. Um, Then, willpower can never be the solution because willpower is a short-lived burst of being able to say no to something right it's it's counterintuitive if you think about it because if you want to be able to live a lifestyle where you are healthy but you are enjoying the foods that you love you're not losing control then willpower can't even be part of the solution because it's just short term right and it's it's so important for me to for me to convey this message because it's the number one thing that people tell me that I think I'm broken, right? I just, I don't have willpower. And then people will be reluctant to try something different, right? Because my program, like the Food Freedom Academy, is not a diet. I'm not going to tell you, oh my God, you need to stop eating donuts and you need to work out seven days a week because that's not sustainable. So in my Food Freedom Academy, like, I show you how to go against the grain and I show you how to actually address why, why the binging, why the emotional eating, why the guilt happens so that you can understand your own behaviors, you can understand your own mindsets, you can understand your own thoughts, how they affect your behaviors, and then you can change your outcomes. And so when people believe that their willpower is the problem, then they're so reluctant to even try something else because they've failed so many diets in the past that they think that they're the problem. So if, for example, if I think I'm the problem, if I think that I'm broken, if I don't think there's any solution for me, 
then I'm going to be really reluctant to try anything new because every time I think it's going to fail. And it it breaks my heart because I know how much my program, how much finding the right solution can transform people's lives if they were only to have more confidence in themselves, if they were only to understand that willpower is not the problem it's the restriction and the deprivation and the dieting and the food rules and the calorie counting and the meal plans those things are the problems causing the disordered eating and the food obsession and the binging and the out of control eating and willpower is not the solution right and then you end up spending your entire life focusing on hating yourself, beating yourself up, feeling like there's something wrong with you. You you let time go by. Time which is your most precious resource, right? You let time go by focusing all of that when you have another option, another solution right in front of you that would solve all of your problems. So that is my little spiel on willpower. I hope that today was helpful. So to kind of sum it up, willpower is not and will never be the solution, right? It is a time waster. It is an energy waster. And not once have I had to utilize willpower. And what my clients all come to find out is that willpower has never actually been part of the solution. Um, and it's funny because this week, especially we had a call in my food freedom Academy and what all of them were saying, like, Oh my God, it's so weird. I actually crave fruits and vegetables and salads and healthy foods now. And my cravings for chips and, and my intense cravings for sweets have kind of just diminished and those cravings, that's not because they don't eat less sweets. They don't overeat less. They don't emotionally eat less because they've, I've taught them how to have more willpower, right? It's not about that. It's about so many other things that need to be looked at. So many things that are happening on under the surface. So please, I hope that if you can take away one message from this live is that you're not weak. You're not broken. You've just been fed a lot of lies and misinformation by a diet industry that makes millions off of you thinking that you are the problem and that more meal plans and more restrictions and more shakes and more pills and more apps, etc., more memberships to Noom and Weight Watchers is going to solve it. And it never will. Not in the long term, at least. So... If you are finally kind of coming around, hopefully, to not blaming yourself, right? If you are finally coming around to realizing that dieting is not the answer and there is another way to find freedom around food, to eat in a way that feels good for your body, to work with your body, to have the tools and the strategies to understand emotional eating, understand cravings and binging and actually put a stop to it once and for all instead of just putting another band-aid and if you want to learn those strategies if you want to learn those tools if you want to learn what my clients are learning in the food freedom academy um unfortunately like i said the doors are closed for my food freedom academy right now but you can hop on the wait list to have priority details once the doors open so that you can, if you are ready to jump in and you want to learn how to heal your relationship with food and put dieting behind you once and for all so that you can live a life that is healthy both for your mind and for your body, then I will leave, um, I will leave the link for the waitlist in the comments below. 
and let me know if today was helpful. Let me know by saying hashtag value in the comments. I want to hear from you guys. I want to know that these lives are helpful, that you learn a lot from them. Okay? So thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your beautiful Wednesday. I'm going to go out for a walk because it's so beautiful. And I will talk to you next week.